Hey guys, it's Cece, and I have a bit of an oops book haul. So this book haul is an oops because I just did one in November, and I've really been doing better at not getting too many books so that I'll never be able to handle reading them all. But in December, I oopsed. And I got a bunch of books that I'm going to talk about. And I have to talk about them before Christmas because I'm definitely going to end up getting more books for Christmas and other stuff. This is a pre-Christmas oops book haul. That's what you need to know. Let's talk about the books. I have 11 books to talk about. Most of them are 2017 releases. I do have one 2018 release and I only purchased two of these myself. The rest came from publishing houses and subscription boxes. So let's talk about the two I actually purchased first, and then we'll get into all of the ones that got sent to me. So the first of the two books I actually purchased myself, we have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Yeah, I had to go out and buy it. I read Six of Crows in November. I wound up giving it about four stars. I liked it. It wasn't my favorite book ever, but I liked it. I liked it enough that I went out within the next two days after I read it, and, uh, and I bought Crooked Kingdom. Six of Crows, as I'm sure many of you know, is about six characters who were all kind of part of this underground crew, and they are tasked with pulling off an impossible heist. It really relies on that group dynamic and these characters coming together, being stronger because they've come together, developing relationships, and it was good. I liked it, and I really wanted to read the second half of the duology, which is Crooked Kingdom, plus I'm really into this one being exclusively red. I like the one that's exclusively black more, but it's still such a pretty book, and I'm very excited that I own it, and I get to read it soon. And the other book that I bought with my very own money is Nevada by Imogen Binney. This was one of the books on my top 15 to read in 2017 TBR. So last time I talked about this book, I said it was a coming of age story, which is not what I meant. I, it's not a coming of age story. It's more of like a self-discovery kind of journey. It's a book about a trans woman living in New York City, and she finds out that her girlfriend has been lying to her. So she sets off on a road trip to kind of learn more about her Self. I live for road trip stories, I live for queer stories, plus the trans rep in this book is own voices, and I was really trying to like find this for my library, and it just wasn't happening, so I finally decided to buy it myself. And I'm glad I did, like it's a beautiful book, and I'm really hoping that when I read it in the next couple of weeks, I really like it. Okay, so now onto all of the books that I didn't buy myself. I have a book from a subscription box, four books from Penguin Teen, and four books from Simon Teen. Let's do the subscription box first. At the end of November, Janelle and I unboxed a box called the Book Box Club. It was sent to us by Crate Joy. If you want to go check out that video, I will leave a link on the screen. But we unboxed that and then recommended some of our other favorite subscription boxes, if you're interested. And the book that came in Book Box Club was The Memory Trees by Kali Wallace. The Memory Trees is about a girl named Sorrow who grew up in this place that her ancestors have passed down. It is an incredibly unusual orchard. Their family is often ridiculed for the way they live their lives. They're just this very bizarre group of people, and they are Sorrow's whole world until one night her sister Patience is tragically killed, and when her mother can't handle it anymore, Sorrow moves to Miami with her father. Eight years later, she goes back to the orchard in Virginia and tries to rediscover what it meant to live there, her past, how her sister actually died, and I'm so interested in this book. It sounds fantastically magical and weird, and I hope that I really love it. Plus, so it has a blue cover, but like, underneath, it's bright red. And I am very, very into that. Usually the book underneath matches the cover, but I love that you get this peak of red. It makes me very happy. Small things in life, guys. Just be happy about the small stuff. Next up, I'm going to talk about the four books that Simon & Schuster has sent me over the last couple of months. First up, we have The Watcher's Guide. This is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer book, and it's in honor of the 20th anniversary of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The Watcher's Guide is just sort of an official guide to the show. It contains stuff from all the different seasons, interviews with a bunch of the actors, behind-the-scenes stuff, and... I was so excited when they offered to send this to me. This is the first time it has been collected in like a hardcover edition. There used to be various editions of the Watcher's Guide and they've all been kind of gathered up and put into this new version of it, which is gorgeous. So I love this cover. I think it's so pretty. But then on the inside, like I can't wait to look through a ton of this stuff, especially as 
that's so weird. So I'm currently doing a Buffy rewatch, and I just very, very recently watched The Wish. So it's cool that that's what I flipped open to. But I'm going to read through some of the stuff that I've already rewatched, and then I'm going to kind of read along with this as I continue my rewatch and continue listening to my Buffy podcast. This is just a beautiful book, and I'm really excited Simon & Schuster sent it to me. They also sent me When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. This was one of the biggest books of 2017. So many people read this when it came out, and I didn't get the chance. Really excited I have the chance now. So this is the front cover. It was one of my favorite covers of the year. Also the back cover. Gotta love it. When Dimple Met Rishi is a YA contemporary about two Indian American teens who have an arranged marriage and they wind up meeting at a summer camp for web developers. It's supposed to be cute and fun and I will never get over this cover for my entire life. It's too good. I adore this cover. Simon & Schuster also sent me two books by Sean David Hutchinson. I feel like I'm gonna be reading so much Sean David Hutchinson in 2018. So the first book was At the Edge of the Universe Universe, and this was his 2017 release. It came out in March, possibly? Maybe February? At the Edge of the Universe is about a boy named Ozzy. He has been best friends with a kid named Tommy since second grade, they've been boyfriends since eighth grade, and then one day Tommy completely vanishes. Not just physically, he vanishes from the minds of everyone who's ever known him. Sean David Hutchinson writes weird books, but they all sound great, and I loved We Are the Ants, so I'm excited about this one. I heard some less than incredible reviews for At the Edge of the Universe as far as, like, comparing his other books, but I'm still hoping that I will enjoy this one. But in the email where Simon & Schuster asked me which books I wanted to receive, I responded from their list and then I was also like, can I please beg an arc off of you guys? Would you would you pretty please send me an arc? And they did! It's The Apocalypse of Elena Mendoza. So this book is coming out in February of 2018. It is one of my most anticipated releases of 2018. And I get, I got an arc of it. Thank you, Simon Teen. The Apocalypse of Elena Mendoza is about Elena Mendoza, who is the product of a virgin birth, which can be explained away, but she also has the ability to perform miracles. So that all sounds amazing, but also Elena's queer and is falling for a girl named Freddy. And I'm into that. I'm into everything about this book and everything Sean David Hutchinson does. And I will be reading this very early in 2018, so look out for a review. I'm so happy that I got this book early. I'm so happy. And the last four books I'm going to talk about are all from Penguin Teen. I have two that I've already read and two that I haven't read, so... Yeah, let's talk about those. So first up, I'm going to talk about the two I have read. I received arcs of these books, read them, reviewed them, and then when they offered to send me hardcover copies, I was like, yes, please. So first up, we have Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. So this is an Eastern Asian inspired retelling of the evil queen. It's a villain origin story about a girl named Ji Feng. Ji Feng has always been told that she is destined to be the empress and she's going to do anything that it takes to make sure that that prophecy comes true. This book is super dark, beautifully written, and I really wanted it most so that I could have a copy when the next book in the series comes out because I think that they're going to look gorgeous next to each other. Like, this is the spine of this book, which is beautiful. It's also beautiful underneath the cover. Like, whoa, you can't even see. Look how nice that is with the gold and how shiny it is. This book is just really pretty, and I liked it, and I cannot wait for the sequel, so I was really excited when Penguin offered to send this one to me. They also sent me a finished copy of Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore, which you guys are going to hear me talk about again in like a couple of weeks, because this is definitely going to be one of my favorite books of 2017. Though I've already gushed about so many elements of this book, I have a full written review. If you would like to go read it, I will link it down in the description below. Basically, this is about a girl named Jane, and recently her beloved guardian aunt has passed away, and so she drops out of college and she's just really floundering and trying to figure out what she's going to do going forward. And then an old friend suddenly appears out of nowhere and invites Jane to her family's island mansion. And once Jane gets there, she meets all of these eccentric people, gets involved in their lives, and is then offered a choice. 
and whichever decision that she makes is going to drastically alter her life. The first portion of this book is set up kind of like a gothic mystery, like Orphan gets invited to the island mansion of a group of rich people, and you don't really know what's gonna go on. But then it turns into a choose-your-own-adventure novel where each decision Jane makes sends her completely into different versions of her life as far as like different genres. She gets sent, you know, back into a gothic mystery or maybe into a sci-fi story. There's a lot happening. Also, Jane is falling for a girl, a super nerdy girl, like they meet and immediately start talking about their favorite Doctor Who companions, and this girl's ringtone is the Lord of the Rings music. I... It's, it's a female-female romance after my own heart, truly. So yeah, Jane's also bisexual and artistic and dealing with grief. This book is so weird and so good, and I just want everyone to read it. And I'm so happy I have this physical copy because it has um, illustrations inside that my arc was missing. So maps, also intros to all of the uh, chapters are like very visual. And I'm really glad to finally have all of that art. And at some point, I'm going to have to transfer all of my many, many, many post-it notes for my arc into this new physical copy. But that's going to take a while because that thing is covered in post-it notes. But I got this and I'm so happy. Who left? The next one I'm going to talk about is That Inevitable Victorian Thing by E.K. Johnston. I feel like I should keep this held really weird just so you can continue to see how beautiful the cover is with the shiny gold tree. This book is set in a near future where the British Empire never fell, basically. The main character is a girl named Victoria Margaret, who is a descendant of Queen Victoria I, and she's like the crown princess of the empire. Now that she's come of age, there is the system of like genetic matchmaking and she's going to have to marry her partner but before that happens she gets one summer of freedom and she meets these two people they have the summer of adventures of debutante balls and pirates and I just have been so interested in this book I know also that there's a female female romance somewhere in here that makes me really excited I got this book and immediately went and took a hundred pictures of it. It's just so gorgeous. And I hope that the inside is as good as the outside because it also has a really cool concept. And the final book I'm going to talk about in this pre-Christmas oops book haul is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Yep, I have the new John Green book. I didn't think it was going to happen either, but here we are. So I have read all of John Green's other books. All of them? Yes, I've read all of John Green's other books and... I didn't think when he wrote another book I was going to be interested in it until I heard the description of this book. I don't know a ton about the main plot of this book. I know it's about a girl named Aza, 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 and she kind of gets drawn into this mystery of a fugitive billionaire and tracking him down, but what drew me to the story and what made me change my mind about actually really wanting to read it is the fact that the main character has OCD, as does John Green, and that was that was really all it took. I've kind of talked about in other videos the fact that multiple people in my family and close friend group have OCD, my sister has OCD, and I've really wanted to read a book that has great rep, and I have heard from other people who also have OCD who have read this book that the rep is really incredible. So I can't wait to read this, and if it's good, hopefully pass it on to other people in my family who I think might enjoy it. And yeah, here I am! 2017, holding the new John Green book. I have not held a new John Green book since 2012. I was still in high school the last time I held a new John Green book, and now I have a college degree. And that's weird. Okay, guys, that's it. Those are all of the new books that I wanted to talk about that I've received in the past month. What do you think about all of my new books? Are there any that I should prioritize reading over the others? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!